Next ratio category are the asset management ratios. There are four asset management ratios, inventory turnover, day sales outstanding, fixed asset turnover, and total assets turnover. We're going to start with the inventory turnover ratios, which is inventory divided by or is sales divided by inventory. Inventory turnover ratio looks at how often we sell our inventory through each year. Ideally, we want this to be a higher number compared to a lower number. Higher numbers means we're not keeping as much inventory on the shelves as long, but instead selling it quickly and getting it into and out of our possession. The more frequently we turn over our inventory, the more often we can profit from selling that inventory. So we need sales divided by inventory. We go to our data sheet, and the first item we're going to need is our sales, our revenues, 24,088. And then we need inventory, which is up here at 1,641. So inventory turnover. is our sales, 24,088, divided by our inventory, 1,641. Go to our calculator. We get that 2,488, or 24,088, divided by 1,641. Gives us an inventory turnover of 14.68. Which tells us that we sell through our inventory about 14 and a half times each year. So we do a good job. We sell through our entire inventory a little quicker than one month. The next thing we want is our day sales outstanding ratio. Accounts receivable divided by sales per day. The idea of this ratio is that we're trying to figure out how long on average it takes us to collect our credit sales. The longer it takes us to collect our credit sales, all else equal, the worse off we are. Two factors there. One is time value of money. The sooner we receive our money, the more it's worth to us. If you remember chapter one, we talked about the timeliness of expected cash flows. The quicker that money comes in, the more valuable it is to us. And the second factor is the longer it takes us to collect those accounts receivable, the more likely it is that people are not going to pay and we're going to run into bad debt expense. So all else equal, we'd like our day sales outstanding to be quicker. One little disclaimer on that. Any company can quickly get their day sales outstanding to zero, the minimum level, by not using any credit sales whatsoever. Sell only for cash. You won't have any accounts receivable. Your day sales outstanding will be zero problem with that is we're probably going to end up losing sales. So there's a trade-off between how much we allow our day sales outstanding to grow versus our sales levels. If we try to focus on minimizing that day sales outstanding, we're probably going to hurt our sales. So we want balance. We want to find the lowest level of day sales outstanding we can get without hurting our overall sales level. But now let's get to the calculation. We need accounts, receivables, and sales in order to calculate this ratio. So we have our accounts receivable at 2,704 and our sales at 24,088. So going to our calculation for day sales outstanding. Our accounts receivable, 2,704 divided by our sales. 24,088 per day. Now when I calculate this, first thing I'm going to do is figure out my sales per day. 24,088 divided by 360 is 66.91. Now you can either write that down and then use it later in the calculation what I like to do is just put it into memory, store it into my memory, 
and now I can go back to the accounts receivable 2704 divided by just press this recall memory to bring that back and every calculator has their store and recall different but every calculator has a way to store something in the memory and then bring it back so you can use that tool and we get day sales outstanding of 40.41 days that tells us it takes coca-cola on average a little more than a month to collect its accounts receivable next we have our fixed asset turnover which looks at how efficiently we're using our fixed assets typically fixed assets refer to property plant and equipment now some balance sheets those are not broken out and we can look at long-term assets but if we have property plant and equipment we want to use that another thing is we want to be sure we use property plant and equipment net of accumulated depreciation a lot of times that is provided for us on that basis in our financial statements we're just given property plant and equipment which is net of accumulated depreciation so we need sales and our net fixed assets go to our data sheet sales were 24,088 net fixed assets our property plant and equipment 6,903 So our fixed asset turnover is our sales divided by that property plant and equipment. Twenty-four thousand eighty-eight divided by six nine zero three gives us a total asset or I mean a fixed asset turnover of 3.49 there's not really a standard level of what's good or bad here with fixed asset turnover but ideally higher is better than lower the more often we're turning over our assets the more we're productive we are at using that property plant and equipment to generate sales so all else equal the higher that number goes the happier we are what we'd want to see is use trend analysis and comparative analysis. Trend analysis, we'd like to see this flat are rising over time. And with comparative analysis, we'd like to see it be at least equal to or preferably higher than the industry average or that of our main competitors. Last asset turnover or asset management ratio we have is total asset turnover, just sales divided by total assets. Just like fixed asset turnover, we'd prefer this to be higher rather than lower. So we want to see this as high as possible, indicating that we're doing a good job of using our assets to generate sales. So we need our, again, sales, our revenues, 24,088. Total assets, 29,963. So we just take that sales divided by our total assets. Grab the calculator. And we get a total asset turnover of 0.80. Our total asset turnover is always going to be less than our fixed asset turnover because the fixed asset turnover focuses only on one component of our assets. This wraps up our asset management ratio calculations. Next up, we'll look at debt management.